Hello, welcome to another edition of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. It's springtime here in Michigan, and with the temperatures rising and the snow melting, there's a lot of moisture that was previously locked up in the snow that's now available for our weather system. With both added heat and more available moisture, you've got the recipe for some very interesting weather. But another important variable in all of this is pressure. Whether or not water's in a liquid or gas state, we often talk about what temperature it's at. But just as important is what the pressure conditions are, and today's experiment is going to make that a lot more obvious to you. Today, we are going to make a cloud in a bottle. Now granted, there's many videos out there showing you how to do this, but I've seen them usually have some very complicated setups. Some out there involve you using a cork, a drill, a hot glue gun, bicycle pumps, small little tire valves. I'm surprised I haven't seen one yet that involves using a PKE meter and a flux capacitor. Indie Labs is committed to showing you how to do things in an affordable, low budget way. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Let's talk materials. To make a cloud in a bottle, you're definitely gonna need an empty bottle. So get an empty two liter bottle, something that contained a carbonated beverage. You don't wanna use one that didn't have a carbonated beverage in it. If bottles are made to contain soda or other carbonated beverages, they have to be made out of a stronger polymer. And since we're gonna be applying pressure to this, we want something that can handle it. A major key ingredient for this is also these new gadgets that are out there available at supermarkets everywhere. They're really low cost, got this one for $3. What these pumps do is they screw onto the bottle just like the cap does, and then you're able to apply pressure over the soda to keep your soda fizzier. It keeps it from going flat. We're gonna be able to use this gadget in our experiment in order to increase the pressure conditions within our bottle. You're gonna need some matches. And then optional for this is some thermometer tape, something that you can get at the pet store. These are usually for checking to see what temperature your aquarium or terrarium is at. If you use this, you're gonna need some tape too. This will allow us to see the temperature and pressure relationship that exists for gases. And then finally, because we are increasing a pressure system, we're gonna use safety glasses, and I strongly encourage you to do the same. Now, a lot of the other videos that are out there on this, they just show you the trick, and they don't really explain much of the science behind it. Hey, still much respect goes out to them. They are out there promoting science. But if you're anything like me, you find pleasure not just in watching the trick, but in actually understanding what's happening. Here at Indie Labs, you're gonna learn something, cuz. So let's talk about how clouds work. Each of these candies represents a water molecule in the gas phase. You'll notice that they're moving around, and that's because they have heat. Heat really just is the motion of particles. The faster particles are moving, the hotter they are, and the slower they move, the colder they are. At these normal gas phase temperatures, the particles collide off of each other with too much energy for them to ever condense. Water molecules are attracted to each other, but they're just moving too fast to condense with each other. So let's slow them down. Once we've slowed them down, these particles could be ones where they are able to condense, they're at a low enough temperature to. But to get two water molecules to collide together with just enough energy transfer so that way they both stay in the liquid phase, that's pretty tough to do. Usually if one hits another, it's going to transfer enough energy to knock the other one off of it like two magnets that are thrown together and collide too hard in the air to ever stick together. Now if we give them something else, something maybe solid, that they can condense onto, then we might see something different. So let's do that. This here represents a speck of dust, something small and solid that when the water molecules that are moving slow enough to condense collide in with it, they're able to transfer their energy throughout that solid piece. Thus, they don't bounce off with enough energy to stay in the gas phase. When real clouds and even fog form, they need these small little solid pieces, which we call nucleation sites. I'm not saying a cloud can't form without them, but it makes it a whole lot easier if nucleation sites are available. Now much of what we're doing today has to deal with the pressure-temperature relationship that French physicist Guillaume Amontan first discovered in the early 1700s. Many chemistry textbooks out there still get this wrong and call this Guy Lussac's law, but authors, do your homework. Amontan got there first, a good hundred years earlier. He discovered it when he was trying to build a thermometer that dealt with air pressure. In simple terms, what the idea states is that if a gas is kept in a sealed container and you increase its pressure, it will also increase in its temperature. The higher the pressure, the warmer the gas. And that's what our temperature tape is going to be able to show us. Alright, so here's our hypothesis. If we use our gadget to increase the pressure above a sample of water in our cloud bottle, that'll heat up the gas above it and also then heat up the liquid water. If we get the pressure high enough, plenty of that liquid water then is going to evaporate in the bottle. Then, by unscrewing our gadget, we can quickly lower the pressure, which will rapidly then decrease the temperature of our water vapor. 
Since that evaporated water will quickly lower in temperature, it'll be looking for some place to condense. As long as we provide that water vapor with nucleation sites, then we'll see it condense and we will observe a cloud in a bottle. You ready to do this? Experiment time. time, time. Start out by adding some water into your two liter bottle. You don't need much, maybe about, oh, two fingers thick as they used to say. And if you're using the thermometer tape, you're gonna wanna tape that onto your gadget. Get it nice and secure and then you're ready for action. Notice also, we're starting out at about 71 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you got your water in there, go ahead and slide in your pressurizing gadget. Now I know what you're thinking. Let's take this to the extreme. Let's see how pressurized we can get it. The little kid in you wants to do that. The little kid in me wanted to as well. I already checked this out for you. Think that idea all the way through. How do you find out how pressurized this can get? What ends up happening is something breaks. I already tried this out, and the first thing that ends up breaking is your gadget, so I wouldn't do it. Okay, we're ready to pressurize, but first, get those safety glasses on. Now, I don't want to pressurize this too much to risk breaking my gadget, so I'm going to give this 100 pumps. Feel free to count along with me if you want. One, two, three, four. 18, 19, 20. Can already feel more pressure in there. 49, 50, definitely tighter. I, mean, I can already see that we're at 75 degrees. 51, 52. 97, 98, 99, 100. Thermometer in there is reading close to 82 degrees. All right, here we go. Think we'll see a cloud? Three, two, one. No cloud. Why not? Well, go back to our hypothesis. Didn't we say that we'd observe a cloud if we gave the water vapor nucleation sites? We didn't do that. That's what your matches are for. Now, hey, I don't know how old you are watching this video, but if you're at that age where your parents have told you not to play with matches, you go get an adult to help you out with this part. We're gonna light a match. Once it's got a good flame going, I'm gonna blow it out and put it in our bottle. Then pretty rapidly, I'm gonna put on our gadget. And now with that smoke in the bottle, even though I can't really see it, I know there's small little tiny solid particles all throughout that gas above the liquid. Those are gonna be our nucleation sites. So the first trial we did, that's really our control. Now we're gonna test out and see if we get a difference with the nucleation sites available. So let's do the same amount again, 100 pumps. One, two, three. 49. 50, getting warm in there. 97, 98, 99, 100. And we're back at the 82 degrees. Three, two, one. Oh, there's our cloud. Nucleation sites. Now that you understand the setup, try doing it a few more times to reproduce your results. You can also think about what kind of variables you could affect to try to get even better ones. And for even more stunning effects, try doing it in the dark with a flashlight or a light bulb pointed right at the cloud. You can really get some good observations. Hey, I hope you enjoyed doing this Indie Lab. If you did, please give it the thumbs up and help keep Indie Labs going. Also, subscribe to the channel. We've got more Indie Labs on the way. You don't want to miss out. Feel free to share these with any of the other science enthusiasts you happen to know. The more Indie Labbers, the better. I also want to take a second just to thank those that have been leaving the comments and sending me the tweets. I love reading about what you've been doing with Indie Labs. It's awesome stuff. If you're new to this, take some photos of you doing the lab. Send it out to Twitter and Instagram. Use the hashtag Indie Lab so we can all find them, see what you're up to. And tell us your results, even when they're not that great. Hey, it happens. It's part of science. Now one more thing, really important before we go. You might notice this video is called Safe Cloud in a Bottle. I've seen other videos doing this with isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I know that they do it because you get a more effective cloud. And that's because rubbing alcohol is a more volatile liquid. It's easier to evaporate. But let's think this idea all the way through. The end result is that you have a mixture of air, which includes oxygen, with a very volatile, very combustible vapor. That is a huge accident just waiting to happen. So don't do it. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And until then, keep your science safe.